Hello InfoPerson, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about yet another very unusual black hole collision that was discovered not so long ago. And even though we've talked about many different black hole collisions prior, this one is a little bit different. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So a few years ago, when we just discovered the first ever black hole collision, it created quite a lot of excitement in the news, while also providing a lot of different ideas for our imagination to try to understand what exactly is it that we witnessed billions and billions of light years away from us. Now, black hole collisions today are not really that exciting anymore, unless they're different, or unless it's something else that collided with a black hole. In some of the previous videos, we've discussed neutron star collisions, black hole neutron star collisions, and obviously different types of black hole collisions. But today we're going to talk about yet another black hole collision that's a little bit different from everything else we've seen so far. And as you can probably tell from the title, it's basically of two black holes of completely different masses. Now, it might not sound too exciting, but it is actually a really interesting discovery simply because of what we believe caused all of this to happen. So first of all, this is what we think may have occurred. These two uh, black holes, one roughly around 8.4 masses of the Sun and the other one being about 29.7 masses of the Sun, were essentially coming closer and closer toward one another. Eventually, they of course collided and created a much larger black hole probably around 34 to 35 masses of the Sun. Now, the interesting thing here is that the actual waves emitted by these two black holes were different. And the best way to describe these waves is, well, technically music. The waves themselves seem to be creating the so-called perfect fifth harmonic. In other words, there were two different nodes being played here, and one of the nodes was about 1.5 times slower than the other one. And this allowed us to actually study even more things about these two black holes than were previously possible, simply because this allowed us to now actually identify the spin of the black hole and thus try to understand where these two black holes may have come from and where they collided. So first of all, when exactly did we actually see this? You may be already familiar with the so-called GRACE database, but this is essentially the public alerts created by the LIGO observatory pretty much every time something is detected by it. And here you can see that we seem to detect one at least once a week now. And for the past year or so, since um, roughly around March of 2019, the scientists observed approximately 56 different observations that have actually not still been analyzed. And the first one to be finished analyzed was essentially this one, from April of 2019. The observation itself only basically looks like this. And the actual event is ridiculously fast as well. All of this happens in an instant. But this is normally enough for us to get so much data that we can then start to analyze the distance to the black holes, the initial mass of the black holes, and the final mass of the black holes, as well as sometimes other properties. Now, measuring the spin of the black hole is somewhat difficult, but when they form the harmonics, or basically two different frequencies, it is possible for scientists to then even calculate how fast the black holes were spinning. In this case, it's really only possible for the bigger black hole because it has a lot more influence. And all of the data show that the larger black hole was spinning about 40% the limit of the actual spin. Or in other words, the event horizon was moving at around 40% uh, the speed of light. But when we talk about the spin of the black hole, it's a little bit difficult to imagine. It's not the accretion disk that we're talking about that spins around it. It's the black hole itself which creates these unusual effects of the uh, rotation of the space-time around itself. And normally, the faster the black hole spins, the more weird effect it produces. Like, for example, in this case, the um, gray area that you see right here, this is known as the ergosphere, and this is formed by a black hole that spins really, really fast. Now, the particle that you're uh, seeing here is moving uh, in prograde motion, but then is forced to change its motion and move in the opposite direction with the spin of the black hole. The ergosphere that's formed here is actually a really, really interesting phenomenon, but we'll probably talk about this in some of the future videos. And so in this case, this black hole was also experiencing these effects 
Although we're not entirely sure if the smaller black hole was affected like this particle. It's most likely that it wasn't. Simply because it wasn't just orbiting around the black hole, the two were actually merging. But nevertheless, the origin of these spin effects is what excited the scientists because a lot of people started coming out about this particular black hole collision, suggesting that the bigger black hole may have actually been created by another black hole collision prior to this. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting because the only way that the bigger black hole can actually spin so fast and have such an unusual mass of about 29 masses of the sun is if the larger black hole was created prior to this collision in either some sort of a multi-star system, like for example in the middle of a globular cluster where a lot of stars are combining and being destroyed at the same time, or What's even more interesting is that the much more likely explanation for this is actually related to another theory that suggested that the reason we're seeing so many of these black hole collisions is because we're seeing most of them happen in the middle of the galaxy, right next to the central black hole. In other words, we're witnessing the events happening in the center of some galaxy somewhere far away where a lot of different black holes are orbiting around the central region and are essentially colliding with one another simply because there are so many of them. In our own galaxy, we believe that there are at least 10,000 different black holes in this region right here. And so discovering a colliding pair is not going to be very difficult. And so in this case, we may have essentially observed two different black holes in the middle of another galaxy at a distance of about 3 billion light years away from us and it seems that the smaller black hole essentially got attracted to the larger black hole that has already gone through at least one or possibly even two different collisions simply because of the mass that it had. And the reason why a lot of scientists do think that this is probably the better explanation here is because it is very unusual and actually somewhat unpredictable for us to detect so many different collisions pretty much every week. We didn't really expect to find so many and theoretically, approximately 5 years ago, we thought that we might only find a couple per year. But the amount of collisions has been completely overwhelming. We detect at least one per week and sometimes even more. And so scientists have proposed the explanation that maybe what we're seeing is a collection of different black holes in the middle of a typical galaxy and we're just seeing the events happening from centers of different galaxies. So in this case, if we were to try to simulate this, the central region of a typical black hole would look something like this. This is a more simplified version, of course, but there's basically a lot of things orbiting the black hole. Not just the accretion disk, but a lot of different matter, a lot of different stars, all sorts of uh, planetoids, planets, even asteroids. And some of these objects are so-called rogue black holes. There are probably quite a lot of them around every single galaxy. And once in a while, these objects come really, really close to each other and basically combine. And this is what we're seeing far, far away in our own galaxy. In other words, the only explanation we can currently give to the frequency of these black hole collisions and also the only explanation we can give to the detection of this particular black hole or specifically this black hole pair, which by itself would be extremely rare in any other circumstances, is really that um, this is something that happens in the center of typical galaxies and something that we will probably be seeing quite a lot more in the future as well. But for now, this is just one of the explanations. There are probably going to be more and possibly even better explanations in the future, and we might even discover even more unusual black holes, some that we may have never really even thought about before. Most importantly, we might be able to finally understand how all of this relates to our own galaxy and of course, our own existence here on planet Earth. But whether these black holes came from some sort of a exotic, unusual multi-star system or from a global cluster or from the middle of the galaxy, this is not something we're going to know anytime soon until we discover more similar collisions and more similar events that can then be explained in some other way. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to answer this with certainty. And most scientists today don't even expect to have these answers because the LIGO project and the whole idea of detecting these gravitational waves has already been able to achieve so much more than we expected within only about 5 years or so. So imagine what we're going to know in about 5 years from now. It's actually kind of mind-blowing to even think about it. But until we discover more about black hole collisions or until we discover more about this particular event, that's really it. You can check out the paper and um, other discoveries in the description below. And you can also check out other videos I've made about different black hole and neutron star collisions as well. 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. And alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.